Okay, we are down uh, in the Calor... Boy, I am having a tough time with that. <laughs> Caroliners, did I get it right that time? Uh, room, and um, uh, we're gonna go over uh, the current keyboard and as well as the a little bit about the new keyboard we'll be getting. So, uh, Josh, take her away. Okay, um, like Doug said, that uh, we can run through the keyboard and what the connections all mean at this level. And if you look up here, you'll see all these wires coming through your ceiling. Well, those wires are the same wires that are connected to the transmission bars that you saw upstairs that run directly to the valves. And each note has its own wire, and each note also has its own adjuster. And a Carolinor might want to adjust the, the length of that wire or the closeness of the clapper to the bell, depending on their playing style. If they play a little harder, they want to adjust the clapper a little further away from the bell. If they have a softer touch, then that gives them the ability to, to bring the clapper closer to the bell so that when they, they press the key, they don't have to generate as much inertia in the clapper to bring it and make it strike the bell. So here are your adjusters um, on this level. You'll see these rods that come off the keyboards um, that go up behind this wood here. But this right here is your adjuster. Um, and you just turn this clockwise or counterclockwise depending on what you're trying to do. Um, lengthen or shorten the wire and the distance between the clapper and the bell. Um, the keyboard's it's starting to get some wear to it. We've replaced the felt punchings uh, between here to, to quiet these down. But as you see, um, it's starting to wear and you're getting some noise out of the keyboard. And uh, the hopes is for the new keyboard to eliminate all that noise. Um, the, uh, the, the new keyboard uh, utilizes um, a, a clevis that actually um, goes, it's a U that mounts like so around the key and then we have pivots, um, frictionless pivots on our keys right here so that, uh, so that you don't have this movement um, forward and back or up and down. Okay, all right, let's go up uh, to the keyboard itself. Not that we weren't looking at it, but we were looking kind of at the back end, I guess. So the new keyboard will be much the same as this, but can you tell me, tell us a, you know, a few of the differences? Sure, the, the spacing on the keys um, of this keyboard and the new keyboard, it, that's all the same. The same notes, the same spacing. Um, the difference is where you'll, you'll find that is in the pedals and it's theory that these pedals were added as an afterthought later down the line after the instrument was installed and that being the case there's the pedals don't radiate they're they're all straight our pedals um, if you've ever looked at an organ uh, pedal alignment the the pedals radiate um, from the straight pedal out to the ends so that they come into it on an angle and radiate in for the player for, for an easier um, reach. The, the other main difference that we will be um, changing is the relationship of the distance between the keys and the pedals. And this keyboard um, lacks about three inches, maybe a little more. Um, in the distance between the key and the pedal. And we say that because as a Carolinor is playing, if he's playing a sharp, this key can't depress all the way before it hits, before it hits the Carolinor's knee. Um, and that's you know, troubling to try to play around where your hands are gonna be and where your feet need to be in order to be able to depress the, the key properly. Um, so those are the, the two main differences. Um, that you'll see in our keyboard. Um, our, our relationships of the key are gonna be a little bit um, deeper, I guess you could say, um, as, as we utilize a, a full keyboard base um, versus um, this keyboard, which is actually suspended from the ceiling. Um, <laughs> very, it's a very interesting setup. <laughs> and uh, we are, we're working on trying to locate the history of the keyboard to find out you know, what, what they did to um, to, to create this keyboard and, and get the setup. It's, it's very interesting. Um, it's the first we've seen like this. And uh, so that it's very rare, very unique, and uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a neat um, timepiece 
as far as the uh, the setup of this keyboard. Okay, and I guess this will be pretty much the last thing that is done as far as the project goes. Uh, in other words, up in the tower and then this yeah, will be last? We'll, we'll pretty much try to finish up the majority of the work in the tower. Um, you know, before we can do any kind of wiring whatsoever in the tower, we have to assemble the keyboard and have it in place and plumb it um, off of the umbrella rack, which is upstairs for the transmission, so that it's left and right and front and back are correct so that the, the wires don't have friction on them as they pass through the floor. Okay. Well, listen, Josh, thanks uh, very much uh, for taking the time out today to uh, uh, explain to our parishioners uh, kind of what phase two of the uh, Carolyn renovation is. And obviously this is huge for us. It's a, it's a major project. And uh, I'll tell you what, we are uh, very glad and very confident uh, and very glad that uh, uh, you're going to be. Thanks again, Josh. And again, appreciate you taking the time. Thank you, Doug. I appreciate it.